Now, you'd be forgiven for thinking that if you buy insurance from one of the biggest names in the business, that it would give you peace of mind, and if the worst happened, it would be dealt with efficiently and quickly. But as the family in our next film demonstrates, a big name doesn't necessarily mean big assistance. Now you start to see the sheer devastation throughout the property. You see how dark the structure is. A widespread decay on all the roof beams now where the ceilings come down. Believe it or not, this used to be the dream home of Andrew and Lisa Miller and their family. This video shows the, the damage that's getting worse and worse. Um, water's coming in through the building various, in various places. This looks like it's rotting. So how did it get to look like this? In January 2018, a storm hit Andrew and Lisa's home in Kent, collapsing their chimney and leaving a hole in their roof. That was an act of God, nobody's fault. At first, the couple weren't too worried as the damage to the house was mostly on the outside. And after all, they had cover through insurance giant, legal and general. So when you realised that there was damage, I mean, how big was the hole in the roof, for example? It's quite minimal. Um, I didn't think we'd have to move out. We have emergency cover, so they were happy to send someone round that day. But emergency cover really just gave us a tarpaulin over the damage. Um, and that was pretty much it. But when the chimney fell, it also severed their electrical cable, which left the house with no power or indeed heating, so their home was uninhabitable. Legal and General arranged for the family to move into a hotel. We um, stayed in, I think, two hotels, um, so we kind of moved from, from night to night, and then we ended up at, um, yeah, in a, the hotel that we stayed for three months in the end. How were you feeling at that point, having to move out and everything? It was difficult, but we thought it would just be a, a, temporary, a temporary fix and that we'd be home quite shortly. Their insurance company, Legal and General, offered £5,000 for the repairs. But after contractors told Andrew that wasn't enough, he asked the insurer for more. But instead of paying up, Andrew and Legal and General fell into dispute over the costs and everything ground to a halt. And as time went on, Andrew watched as the state of the house got worse and worse. During the period thereafter, continually I would go back in and take photos of the property. Nothing happened from the insurers for a number of months. It wasn't until seven months after the storm that contractors, organised by the way by Legal and General, finally started work. But it was to prove a brief flurry of activity. Just a few days after the ceilings were opened up to allow the building to dry out, work was stopped by the local council because the builders weren't following the rules. They just chose to sidestep building regulations. So. I spoke to the insurance company about it. The insurance company um, uh, said they weren't aware of it. However, as a result of it, we were served a stop notice by Seven Oaks District Council. Because um, of? Because the, uh, the works were unauthorised. Having lost confidence in legal and general to find reliable builders, the couple got repair codes of their own. But so far, the insurance company has refused to green light any work. It's left the family in limbo for nearly two years. Andrew and Lisa say they've been abandoned by their insurer, stuck in temporary accommodation while their family home crumbles. The problem is, is that they uh, pontificate, for better word, over decisions of small items, delay the process, and then further work is required because of the damage that's caused as a result of that delay. And how much to rebuild? Like to make it livable. It's a huge amount. I mean, if you were to if you were to look at a house of our size, um, it's going to be upwards of a couple hundred thousand pounds of absolute minimum. Just to minimum. fix it. Just to fix it, and then if you were to rebuild, then we, yeah. we would have to look into that. Andrew and Lisa took their insurer to the financial ombudsman service back in 2018, and they won. It was extremely critical of legal and general, saying its delays were responsible for the damage to the house. But despite this, over two years on. The insurers fix nothing and things continue to deteriorate. I'm told that due to all the wet weather and the rain that's got inside, Lisa and Andrew's house has now become home to a very dangerous and unwelcome guest. Toxic mould. And it's so bad inside the house that it's simply not safe for me to go inside. Even with all this protective gear, our cameras were only allowed in for nine minutes before they had to leave. 
but it was plenty of time for damp specialist Scott Dwyer to show them the extent of the damage. A widespread decay on all the roof beams now where the ceilings come down. We're heading into the kitchen, which is one of the worst affected. And now you start to see the sheer devastation throughout the property. Quite simply, Andrew and Lisa's once beautiful home has been overwhelmed by this highly invasive mold. You've got water coming down and the growth's happening into this corner as well. And then you begin to see why this was needed to be acted on as soon as possible. After Scott showed the cameras around inside, he agreed to take me as close to the building as it was safe to go. Oh my goodness. So I'm looking into the kitchen area. It's a wreck, a complete wreck. And yet I saw the photographs of this lovely house initially. That kitchen now was actually one of the highest points where we took bacterial analysis and the actual air quality. So I have to tell you, at? I can smell it from can here. You? Yeah, and I'm not gonna to stand too near it. I really can smell it, it's terrible. That awful smell of damp. You know, it doesn't take an expert to see that this house is in a shocking state. In over 20 years, Gloria, I've visited many properties and I would honestly rate this as one of the highest risk properties I've been into. In terms of the indoor air quality, the environment's very, very poor. So you've got black mold spores. Some of it has advanced to exotic wet and dry rot. So all the woodwork is completely compromised and all of the plasterboard has been affected. Unfortunately, what happens is with a mold spore, it goes onto the lungs and becomes carcinogenic. Yeah, I was just going to ask you, how dangerous would it be? It's like an asbestos, where the fibres are in the air, the spores are in the air. People think it's just a bit of mold, wipe it away and everything will be OK. That's not the case. So how much will it cost to clean it? The initial clean-up phase is at least probably £70,000. Well, the logic would tell you that if the insurance company had moved ahead with that immediately, then long term you wouldn't have had this sheer amount of damage. I have no doubt that the structure would not be in the condition it's in over that long period. Yes. You know, that's, it's shameful that it's gone on so long. For Andrew and Lisa, the news that their once happy family home is now a serious health hazard is really hard to take. How do you feel when you come out and see your lovely home? We're heartbroken. It's all very well if something happens in life, if you can do something about it. But we can't, and we've tried, and we've tried again, and every time we go to the insurers for any sort of help and assistance, the empathy that you've shown us, they don't exude, they don't have that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the issue we've got, and um, I don't know quite when it's going to end. Do you think you'll ever live in this house again? I'd like to think so, because we have lots of fond memories, but you never know, at the moment I, I can't see us coming back just because of no actions being taken, but hopefully one day. In an attempt to get things moving again, the couple have submitted new proposals drawn up by their own contractors to Legal & General. But with no idea how long it's going to take for those plans to get the go-ahead, they're left questioning why they bothered with insurance in the first place. Legal & General is a big company, they've got a big brand. They have the, the logo of the multicoloured umbrella, which gives you the perception that you're going to be covered no matter what the weather, if you like. Nothing could be further from the truth. I would have thought that having one of the biggest names in the business would mean a speedy return to your home after the storm, but sadly not, because some of these delays just go on and on and on, with seemingly nothing in sight. Andrew and Lisa's case is extreme, but with big storms becoming more frequent in Britain thanks to climate change, this kind of problem is likely to become more common. It makes swift and sympathetic insurance resolutions even more crucial. Unfortunately, since we filmed with Andrew and Lisa, their dispute with Legal and General has continued. The insurer told us Andrew had asked for a single cash settlement to resolve the claim, and it had therefore made two separate settlement offers based on a surveyor's inspection, which it said covers the damage to the building and home contents, as well as compensation. But Andrew and Lisa say the offer simply isn't enough to cover the full cost of repair. For its part, Legal and General said it had offered to instruct an independent expert to review the surveyor's findings. But instead of accepting this, it said the family had chosen to take its complaint back to the Financial Ombudsman Service. While it awaits the outcome of that, 
Legal and General says it continues to pay for the family's rental property. It added that it was incredibly sorry for the delays that have taken place and that its priority remains to ensure that the family have a safe and secure home to return to. When we asked Legal and General why it had taken so long for the repair work on the house to begin, it said a number of factors led to delays. In particular, negotiating access to a neighbouring property so that it could fix the power line to the house to enable work to start on the roof. It accepted that delays did result in more water entering the property. So if you find your insurer dragging its feet, insurance expert James Daly has this advice. So you need to be really careful taking matters into your own hands. If your insurer is being unreasonable in not acting quick enough, then after the event, you may be able to go to the ombudsman or even the courts and make the case that you have to take matters into your own hands. But you're taking a risk there. Uh, and that risk is that you end up paying for all of this and, and not getting that money back from your insurer. James believes that the best approach in kicking your insurer into action is to make a nuisance of yourself. You need to start putting things in writing, complaining, uh, and if you're not getting the response you're happy with, escalating that to the ombudsman. I think insurers forget that there is uh, a human price to these kind of things that drag on for ages. That can be the one thing that finally means that they jump into action and get it sorted. After a two year wait, Andrew and Lisa are determined that they will one day reach a resolution which they feel covers the full cost of the repairs to their home. Let's take the first step, which is to get some action taken by the insurance company. And if they do that and they start to uh, heed the requests that we put to them, then maybe we'll be able to move back one day.